Welcome to our workshop. This is where we're doing an extensive refit on our Cape George Cutter 36. From mechanics to woodworking to fiberglassing, we've got to be prepared for anything, which is why having a good assortment of tools is a pretty key part of getting this refit done. So join us today for a workshop tool tour as we bring you through some of our favorites. Almost all of the tools you see in today's episode are sponsored by one person. He was the person that originally introduced us to Cape George Boats, and I am talking about Scott. Yeah, we wouldn't have a third of these tools if it wasn't for Scott's generosity. And not only is Scott very generous, but he's also extremely knowledgeable. So he has an awful lot of experience with different tools and how they perform over time. And so that knowledge was really invaluable as we went through the process of picking these tools. This workshop series is not just the two of us, but um, it's three musketeers and uh, Scott is pretty involved and this all wouldn't be happening without him. So huge thank you to Scott. Yes. Are you ready to film a tool episode? I'm ready. All right. Starting with the most basic, it is gloves for me. Comfortable gloves, masks, glasses, and headphones with built-in Bluetooth make a big difference to daily life. Getting sturdy, form-fitting, and flexible gloves makes many jobs easier and safer. A dust mask like this one is much better than the N95 style as this one doesn't fog up glasses. And headphones with Bluetooth are pretty key for long work days because podcasts and audiobooks go a long way in making monotonous tasks more enjoyable. And for using power tools, I really like to use the face shield because you can keep it at a distance, it doesn't fog up and it protects really, really nicely. Also, a box of Tyvek suits. These have proven to be invaluable when you're grinding and doing fiberglass work. On the topic of workshop apparel, you wouldn't believe the amount of comments we get about Aladino's pants. They've got a lot of pockets and built-in knee pads. There is even a woman's version. They're from a brand called Black Ladder. Nothing gets in the way. Everything is positioned perfectly. Even if it's full, you can still kneel. I can lay down and things don't necessarily fall out. Some of the items Aladino carries with him at all times include small Kniepex pliers, perfect for getting a tight grip on things, a small crescent wrench, some mini calipers, a measuring stick, pens and pencils, and X-Acto knives. Now, moving on to our everyday tool bag. This bag contains the hand tools we use all the time. Screwdrivers, different Kniepex pliers, tin snips, a long sail needle, some lower quality chisels for demolition jobs, an awl, some big Kniepex pliers for gripping larger items, a crescent wrench, punch pins for driving out stubborn bolts, small pry bars, vice grips, hammers and nail pullers, and Baco scrapers. We use all of these items on a nearly daily basis. And this amazing tool bag was made by a friend of ours, uh, Leah at Best Coast Canvas in Port Townsend. The next five tools look quite different to when we got them five months ago because they are more for demolition and they've gotten a lot of abuse. It's pretty self-explanatory. Hammer must have a bigger crescent wrench, uh, channel lock pliers were um, an incredible help to removing the through holes, dead blow hammer for fragile parts. And also for maracas if you need. Oh. <laughs> 
heavy duty. I thought when we got this one, I thought, wow, we wouldn't need this. <laughs> but I really did. It's a real heavy hammer together with this um, heavier duty crowbar. Moving on now to one of my favorite sets to capture on camera. I mean, look how that gleams. This is a DeWalt ratchet set and we definitely wouldn't have this if it weren't for Scott's generosity. We've used almost everything in here. Bolts on boats can be installed in weird and difficult to access locations. So having a lot of different sizes and configurations of ratchets has been absolutely invaluable. And here's the last box, which is not a power tool. It is a deluxe tap and die set. We have already used it, but I see tons of use uh, coming up especially when we are reassembling the boat and also when we're doing work on the rigging. Next up, we move on to the power tools. Uh, everybody knows a grinder. They make a huge mess, but they also uh, solve a few problems rather quickly. They come with abrasive pads, cutoff wheels, another type of abrasive, and uh, wire brushes, which are useful for prep work just before laying fiberglass. It is always good to scratch up the surface. Next up is the trusty drill. No workshop is complete without one. This versatile tool can do just about whatever you imagine when combined with the right drill bits. So this one here, I'm sure everybody knows, a kit of drill bits. But then something that is maybe more uh, boat specific are forcer bits. Mainly used uh, where you put a bung. When you need bigger holes drilled, then you switch to a hole saw set. And this is the most luxurious hole saw set I've ever seen. I absolutely love it. And together with this whole saw set, I don't recommend using a battery powered drill uh, because it really gets to their limit. And instead, I have a corded version for that. So everything really heavy duty, um, use a corded drill. We also got an impact driver to go alongside our drill. We've never had one of these before, but it specializes in installing and removing fasteners. It does a really good job at this and has made a huge difference in our lives. I wouldn't go without one um, anymore in the future. This has been incredible. Moving on with the power tools, I wouldn't call it essential, but it was super fun having one and I've used it quite a bit. And that is a Sawzall. Various um, saw blades can be inserted at the very tip and it basically acts like a giant jigsaw. This was fun for demolition. It is a rougher tool. I would imagine that everybody has heard of the next two coming up. They are quite famous uh, when working on boats because they are very small, compact and can do a lot of different tasks. The first tool is a Dremel, a great tool for tight detail work, which is often necessary on boats. With several different tips for cutting or sanding or marking, the Dremel is an excellent multi-purpose tool. Next up is an oscillating multi-tool, another great all-rounder. With different attachments, this tool can cut, sand, chisel, abrade, and almost anything else you can imagine. Another must-have tool is uh, a heat gun. This is great for easily removing difficult residues with some heat and a scraper. And next up is sanding. I know most of you would not get as euphoric about this step, but I am a little weird. Sanding is required in every step. So everything needs to be sanded. And ultimately the finish depends on how well you sand. Aladino has always been a sanding fanatic with very particular taste. He's a huge stickler about sandpaper. When we arrived to the States, he struggled to find one he really likes. So he actually sent an email to his favorite Swiss sandpaper company, and they seemed to like our project so much that they actually gifted us this big box of sandpaper from Switzerland. Aladino feels very at home. But I do have to agree, as someone that has never been super keen on sanding, having the right tools definitely makes a difference. There is different types of abrasive on the sandpaper and there is also different types of backing paper that that abrasive is put on the paper. If it's of lesser quality, that grit is not dispersed perfectly on the sandpaper and you'd get the occasional scratches 
which are off. And also on some sandpapers, the abrasive just dissolves and you have like sandy hands and as you're sanding, it gets stuck in your workpiece. Um, it leaves quite a bit of residue from that grit. And lastly, also the backing paper. As I work it and I might warp it, it gets a crack, it breaks, it's really brittle. Uh, backing paper needs to be flexible, it needs to be durable, you can put it on a block, you can bend it. This is what all the Swiss boat yards use. It is made in Switzerland, it is precision stuff. We have sanding blocks of varying grits, which are excellent for quick projects in hard to reach or oddly shaped areas. Sheets of sandpaper are always good multi-purpose items, similar to these rolls, which are really useful if you want to do some hand sanding on a block. Lastly, my favorite are these pieces for an orbital sander. This Cianet paper is extremely durable and designed for maximum airflow. Combined with a good orbital sander and vacuum, you can sand pretty much dust free. For sanders, we have this DeWalt sheet sander and the creme de la creme of all sanders, a Mirka orbital sander. These are crazy expensive, so I don't recommend them unless sanding is a part of your daily life. But if it is a part of your daily life, this sander makes a huge difference. It is extremely light and has really good dust suction. The Festool uh, Sustainer Vacuum is my personal favorite because it is the most compact professional vacuum that you can get. So it's an incredible, incredibly compact package, uh, but super powerful. Next up are our woodworking hand tools. It's a modest selection of good chisels, planes, and measuring devices. Although as we move more into the fine woodworking part of this project, this collection may grow. Uh, sharpening stone, of course, and then three planers. I have a spoke shave. I have a little low angle hand plane and the Bailey, uh, what is this one called? The number four, Bailey number four hand plane. I'm super happy with our workshop because we are following uh, the steps of the boat yards that I have worked at and they all use Bessie clamps. So that's what I know, that's what I trust and that's what I got here. Luckily Scott has included a a pair of quick grip uh, Irwin um, clamps. Uh, I've never used those before, but I am using them daily now. So these are super awesome as well. Here's a compound miter. It is to make quick angled cuts and it does incredibly at doing that. This here is a thickness planer and I have pretty much the same praise as for the compound miter. This has just sped the project forward in an incredible manner. And as the name suggests, a thickness planer is to put different pieces of lumber through it and uh, changes the thickness of it. This should actually go with the basic tools. Um, it's a jigsaw and I've been very impressed with this one. No vibration at all. Um, it's the best jigsaw I've ever used. Next up is a trim router. I've only used big plunge routers in the past, but I have grown to like this a lot more. It is super small, compact, super lightweight and handy, and it has done um, a lot of tasks already. We also have a track saw, and I know here in the States, most people use a skill saw. I'm more used to using track saws. Maybe a skill saw is more versatile, but I find this one is a bit more precise when you really need a straight edge. Um, so this one is mostly for the reassembly when we're cutting plywood and putting things back into the boat. Preparing this tool episode uh, was quite fun. It just reminded me again of how incredibly lucky we are when you pull them all together and you see all the tools on one table and, uh, and you realize the amount of tools that you were gifted. Uh, really, really incredible. Um, thank you, Scott. Thanks to the generosity of Scott and, uh, and thanks to Sia for sending us a box of sanding stuff and to all of our patrons for helping make this all a reality. We are able to have these tools uh, which have just gone so far in letting us do this refit without cutting corners. 
So thank you to all those people. So yeah, the point of this tool tour wasn't to brag, but more just to show, you know, what sort of things are required for a refit of this scale, what sort of things do we use the most, uh, what brands and stuff do we use for different products because, you know, some brands are really good at one thing but not another thing. So hopefully that was helpful to your own workshops and your own refit projects in some way. And yeah, I'm exhausted. This ended up being a really, really long uh, filming day. So I have to go have a look at some of this footage and, and edit it all together and uh, Aladino will put away some of these tools, please. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, We'll, we'll leave you here, and yeah, if you've got questions and stuff, leave them in the comments. We will try our best to get back to you. We will not make a promise, but we will try our best to get back to you. So thanks everyone, we'll see you all next Friday.